Greetings, everybody, and welcome back. I'm going to be recording this out here in my makeshift backyard boat yard, so you're probably going to hear some of the noises of summer, a few lawn mowers and cars going by and a few cicada in the trees, so going to have to put up with that, but it's a beautiful day out, getting a lot of work on the boat done. Got a lot of things to tell you about in this episode. Some of those things I'm going to cover right off the bat. Other things I'm going to cover in more detail uh, at the end of the episode. But one of the things I want to cover right off the bat are some changes to the channel. Now, I know I've said before several times that I want to try and get videos out uh, a lot sooner, a lot quicker. And it still is coming out to be about once a month. Well, a lot of that was because I was trying to uh, do my regular commercial work and find new commercial work. And uh, with the way things have been going with the COVID lockdowns, um, my business has just kind of disappeared for a while. So I imagine it'll come back up, but until then, I'm going to start doing this full time. That means I'm going to try and get videos out a little sooner. I'm going to initially try to get out uh, two videos a month and then up to uh, four. So hopefully once a week. That's uh, what I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to try and make a go at this with Patreon. And if you'd like to contribute anything to this channel to help me keep these going, I would be very grateful. But always know these videos are going to be free. They're going to be as information-filled and entertaining as I can make them. And uh, I just hope they're out there for everybody who enjoys them no matter what. Now some other big news revolves around some of the projects that I've got going on and some of the ones that are going to be coming down the road real soon. In fact, quite literally. I'll of course be continuing work on the Harris Off Eagle here and I've got a lot more work I've done on that to show you. Now as some of you will remember, and I've got videos on it, this Harris Off Eagle was purchased after I saw it on a free boats uh, page on Facebook. Well, uh, you know, just to let you know, I no longer frequent those sites. Uh, I don't uh, look at them. I don't subscribe to them much. Um, but every once in a while, things come my way anyway. A few months ago, looking on the Cat Boat Association's Facebook page, this little jewel came up. It's an 18-foot Fenwick Williams design cat boat built in 1955. It's been abandoned on this dock for a long time and the owner of the marina said if nobody comes and gets it he's going to take a chainsaw to it and I just couldn't let it go. Uh, we're losing our history every time we lose these boats and I want to see it restored. I think it's worthwhile. It looks in rough shape but I'm really not seeing any significant rot on it. I think it's just uh, oxidized wood and it's going to need some TLC. This is going to take some time, no question about it, but it's going to be a different project and this is going to be something I'm looking forward to. Second of all, what am I going to do with it? I mean, how many boats can I sail at once? Now for the time being, let's get back to the Eagle. I've been doing a lot of fairing and fiberglass work on the boat in the last week. I'll be happy to show you how it is I do it, but frankly, when I need to know how to do fiberglass work, I always tune in to Andy up at Boatworks today. I mean, let's face it, the man is the fiberglass whisperer. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! I know people just absolutely losing their minds. So anything I do, I've tried to adapt from what he's shown and his expertise to try and fit it to this particular project. Uh, but if you really want to know how to do fiberglass right, give Andy a call, look up his videos. He's going to tell you exactly how to do it the best way possible. So let's get into it. I've done some videos before that go into more detail on the design problems of this. Uh, having the chain plates come through the deck like this, it was inevitable that they were going to work loose and let water in and rot and all kinds of problems. So I'll uh, let you go back and watch those other videos if you want to see more detail on it. But here's my plan to fix this. The blue areas on this diagram represent the fiberglass, some of which has been damaged or cut out. And the sort of brown color is the wood core, which has been rotted in a lot of cases. So there's a big void in there. And the white areas are just the areas where it's been rotted out. And that's where the void is that I have to fill and strengthen. So my first goal is going to be to route out and then clean up some of these fiberglass areas to give it a little bit better of an area to uh, bond some new glass to. After that I'm going to use some thickened epoxy to attach a pre-made fiberglass base to it. That will allow some strength to be added to it as well as be a good firm base for the rest of the filling that has to go in. After that, I'm going to add some Thixo or some thickened epoxy to fill in those voids and seal those up. Then I'll add some fairing compound on the top and bottom and sand it all flush. One thing to keep in mind is that I'm going to be doing this on the grounds that I'm not going to be using the old design for the chain plates. If I were, this would be a little bit different of a repair, but since I'm not going to use this to handle the loads of the mast anymore, 
this is what I'm going to do to seal it up and keep it secure. Now what I am going to do, however, is move the chain plates to the outside of the hull. And I mentioned this in a previous video, but showing you here, I'm going to take the chain plates from where they were, poking through the deck, and I'm going to move them to the outside of the hull. Now to add some strength both to the chain plate area as well as the top of the deck, which I'm repairing, I'm going to add some knees on on the inside. So that's going to help distribute the load coming through the mast and down through the stays as well as offer some structural integrity and stiffen up the deck area where I'm filling in the old chain plates. So the next step is to begin to route out the areas where the chain plates came through the deck. Always seems to be a Dremel works best for that. Once I routed it out, I'd blow it out with an air compressor or get in there with a vacuum and try and pull out all the little bits of rotted core. As much as you can take out, the better and just kept working with the Dremel, take out some spider cracks, open those up a little bit so I can seal them. Anything where water might get back down here needs to be sealed up. And as you can see, the core that was supposed to be in there is pretty well rotted out. Now the next step is I'm gonna sand the top and the inside a little bit so that anything I put on there, thick so, thickened epoxy, fairing compound, whatever, has a good clean surface to bond to. The underside where the chain plates went through were a little bit more of a challenge. There was a lot of stuff in there that just didn't want to come out with a sander. It kept gumming up the paper. So I ended up using an angle grinder with an abrasive disc to take the worst of it off. And then use things like my specialized sanders to try and clean it up a little bit. Once it was ready, I used some Total Boat Surface Prep to clean the whole area off so that anything I put on there would stick well. Then I made a small panel out of a piece of fiberglass from an old boat project from a boat I had to scrap. Sanded it off and surface prepped it as well and then mix up some Total Boat Epoxy with some silica thickener. Now just a word of warning, I know it says it's silica on here, but I think it must be also made from antimatter because this stuff just doesn't seem to have any mass to it whatsoever. It will fly away easily. And I would highly recommend that you even go beyond a dust mask, wear even a respirator with this stuff because it will float everywhere and it is really not the best to get in your lungs. So keep yourself protected. After I used the thickened epoxy to stick the panel on the underside of where the chain plates went, and by the way, you could use Thixo for this, that would be a great application for that as well. I then applied a generous amount of Thixo into those voids from the top, filling in as much as I could in the void where the old core used to be, and then as well as every crack and crevice and everywhere I routed out on the deck itself. Just took a putty knife to smooth it out a little bit. Let that cure overnight and then add some fairing compound underneath and here on the top of the deck. It came out absolutely perfect and it's just about ready for primer. I want to take just a moment to tell you about some other applications of the Thixo product, which is one of the best Total Boat products I've ever used. I wish I had a case of this stuff. My friend Skip at the Indian Lake Yacht Club, who also helped me take the Harris Off Eagle across the mountains in a snowstorm, also has a Harris Off America like mine. This boat originally had the design of the outboard engine able to be fitted inside with an engine well and since then Skip has converted it to electric. But there were some problems with the patch that was put on by a previous owner over the old engine well. So Skip asked me if I could give him a hand and see if we could figure out what was going on with this and how to fix it. And it turned out Thixo was a perfect solution for this. So you can see after some sanding that the seam appears to have opened up a little bit. There might have been some filler in there that's decomposed and fallen out and just needed to be patched up a little bit better. So doing a little bit more sanding and getting in there with my Dremel to route the area out, get some good fiberglass to bond to, I cleaned out the seam, sanded around it a little bit more, including some detail sanding to flare it out a little bit, used some de-wax and surface prep, and then just injected a bead of Thixo into that crack. And then just use a putty knife again to just smooth it off, spread it around a little bit. And then long story short, just apply some more fiberglass around the area to really seal it up and strengthen it. So it was a great product for some place that I had to apply upside down. I'm laying on my back applying all this stuff. And the nice thing about Thixo is it stays where you put it. And a couple of days later, Skip sanded it down, primed it, painted it, put some bottom coat on it. He says this is the first time in years it's never leaked. Now back on the Eagle, I'm going to do something with an old through hole that I'm not going to use anymore. 
It was originally for the discharge of a small sink that was inside, which I always thought was kind of ridiculous to have a sink inside of these. But anyway, I'm going to use my sanders at first to start to flare the hole out a little bit. Using larger sanders and even an angle grinder to open it up a little bit. So I'll create kind of a tapered funnel shape in towards the center of the hole. I'm also going to use another piece of salvaged fiberglass, sanded off and cleaned up of course, and that'll be adhered into the inside of the hull to make a nice backing as well as offer some more reinforcement. I'm also going to cut out several pieces of fiberglass, starting out with some chop strand first, and then into a woven mat, so I can add several layers to this, and build that inverted cone back up into something that is roughly the shape of the hull. I'm going to start by applying some Thixo to the panel and the inside of the boat to put in that new patch that will help reinforce the back. Once that's secured, I'm going to apply some thickened epoxy to fill in the hole a little bit better and just spread it around the newly sanded fiberglass to get it ready and then just start dropping in my chop strand. It still leaves a little bit of a divot in there, so I'll add some more epoxy and add a little bit more chop strand into the center. Now, that's not a problem with your monitor. Yes, for some strange reason, the chop strand is turning purple. I have absolutely no idea why. I've never seen it do that before or since. Although it doesn't seem to be affecting the strength whatsoever. Once this was done, the whole thing was as solid as a rock. So I'll check with the folks at Jamestown Distributors to see if they have any idea what that was about, but I haven't been able to find any other examples of that. So must have just been some strange chemical change in there, but like I said, it seems to be working fine. After that, just add the larger circles of matte fiberglass, one at a time. Keep wetting them out, using my rollers to squeeze out any air bubbles. And then once done, just let it cure. Once I came in the next day, I sanded it down to get it smoothed out. And checked it inside and out, and it is solid as a rock. After that, it was time to add some more fairing compound. So after I cleaned it off with some more Total Boat surface prep, I mixed up a batch of fairing compound, applied it, let it cure, came in, sanded it down, and it came already pretty close to being the shape of the boat. But one thing you can do to make sure that it's as level as you can get it is to draw some pencil lines around it and then take very light, about 120 sanding paper to it just for a moment to see what gets sanded off and what remains behind and that'll tell you if you have any divots or occlusions or anything like that that need to be refilled. In the next episode I'm going to show you sanding off the old paint, prepping the hull for primer, show you a neat new little trick to help you work fairing compound around complex shapes, start to fill in some fitting holes with thickened epoxy, and whatever else I can swing. But remember, this Tuesday, I hope to go live with retrieving the new cat boat up in Massachusetts. So if you like this channel, like and subscribe it, and click the little notification bell. That way, when I go live to get this cat boat loaded onto my truck, you'll be able to see it live. Again, thanks to all my patrons who helped make this channel possible. And before I go, I want to talk a little bit more about this cat boat, what I'm going to use it for, and who it's going to be helping out. Well, the purpose of this is to restore it and to show you how it's going to be restored, a classic New England cat boat uh, from a, from a well-known designer. Once it's done and restored, I'm going to take it out to the Chesapeake Bay and put it on loan to Liberty Launch. That's the organization I work with that runs charters and will take vets out on free charters to help them deal with PTSD and other issues they're having for their healing process. Anybody who's been out on the water knows there's nothing like some canvas time to help you heal from rough times. Now right now they're running a two-masted schooner and things are going great. If you're anywhere near Havre de Grace, Maryland, look them up. Everybody that's gone on it has really enjoyed it and when you go on a charter it's going to help sponsor a free, uh, free charter for vets who really need some time out there on the water. So where this cat boat comes in, they're going to be able to take out one, two, three, maybe four people with far less prep time and crew required for the schooner to go out on. So I think this is a nice little option for them. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to include a little promo film that I made for them. Some of you might have seen it. I listed it on the channel elsewhere, but look them up and book your charter. They're going to go through October. It's well worth it. And you're supporting a good cause while you're at it.
Now first I have to get this boat back here to my makeshift backyard boat yard. Tuesday morning we're going to load this thing up and start making our way back to Ohio. So I'm hoping once I get up there on Tuesday morning to even do a little live broadcast. And then at a later date I'll be doing a full episode on it as well to show you its condition, everything I know about it, and give you a little bit of a preview for it. So if you would, just take a couple of minutes to watch this following promo that I did for Liberty Launch. experience in sailing on on this boat and the impact that it had on me the peace of mind and ease that I experienced uh, it's pretty profound walking aboard and being welcomed and and being incorporated into a team and there was just instant camaraderie and also being in the moment spend that time in the moment and just realizing I wasn't hurting or I wasn't fearful or hypervigilant the point of Liberty Launch is a space that's away from everybody's normal everyday experience, people with similar backgrounds, similar problems. Liberty Launch gives veterans, active, active duty military, their families purpose, feelings of being grounded and together and wanted. And so what you wind up doing is being free from the experience. Liberty Launch is a veteran service organization offering a therapeutic, hands-on recreational sailing experience on the Chesapeake Bay for all veterans, active duty military, and their families at no cost. It was great to be out on the water. Recreational therapy helps to get your mind off of things that are bothering you, um, helps you realize there are good things in the world still, and there's a good reason to keep going. You can't be focused on really big bad problems in your life. When you're trying to trim a, a sail, it's really hard to think about all the other. When we went out and I took my veterans on a cruise on Liberty Launch, they were relaxed and laughing and listening to the stories and enjoying the day and the breeze. Just being out on the water, I could see that they, they were getting enjoyment because they're, they're older too. And afterwards, when we got back, they were excited to go again. Getting them out sailing, helping them to find uh, new things, and it kind of helps them define their life and purpose moving forward. That is so important and therapeutic, uh, I feel, to, to veterans, especially people suffering from PTSD. We give our mission for free. Nothing is charged to veterans. They get it for free, all they have to do is show up, and that's what Liberty Launch is doing. We are seeking startup funding to enable us to grow into a self-sustaining benefit corporation, capable of providing this free service to veterans and their families with revenue generated from commercial public charter excursions. I think Liberty Launch offers people a great way to get out and enjoy themselves while funding and giving back to the veteran and their family and the active duty military community for what they have given. Because you can go out and you can, you can go on an excursion and you know that that excursion is funding an excursion for a veteran and their family. Taking care of veterans is a cost of national defense. Liberty Launch calls you to be a part of the healing journey for those confronting the mental and emotional impacts of military service. Your donation will support our immediate operations and allow us to grow our service capabilities and fleet. Now more than ever, vets may be experiencing feelings of isolation. We ask you to please help us provide our nation's greater military community with direct access to the healing power of the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs>